Electric Power Company says it has detected radioactive substances this time in underground water at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Radioactive water was detected beneath the ground near the plant's five turbine buildings. The remaining reactor, building number four, could not be checked as it was blocked by debris. TEPCO says radioactive substances in the atmosphere may have seeped into the soil through rain and sprayed water. The company says it's also possible that the turbine buildings were leaking radioactive water. Underground water seems to contain some level of radioactive substances. And this leads to an understanding that the seawater or the soil in the vicinity needs to be monitored closely as well. And we've been reporting that radioactive substances that leaked from the Fukushima Daiichi plant had been detected in tap water in Tokyo and other parts of the Kanto area. We look at how those substances reached Kanto and the measures taken by the government to prevent radiation getting into the water supply. This is Professor Hiromi Yamazawa of the Graduate School of Nagoya University who analyzed the situation. According to his analysis, radioactive substances leaking from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant seem to have reached Kanto area at least twice, though in very small quantities. Radioactive substances first reached Kanto area after the hydrogen explosion of the number three reactor at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant on March 14th, specifically from March 15th through 16th. Air with traces of radioactive substances from Fukushima Daiichi seems to have been carried southward on a wind blowing from the north, gradually the dispersing from northern Kanto to southern part of Kanto. It first reached Mito City and Utsunomiya City, Maebashi City, Shinjuku, and Chiba, then started having higher deposition. Radioactive substances reached Kanto again when a similar wind pattern prevailed from March 20th through 21st. As they were carried along the coastline southbound, measurements in Mito City and Chiba Prefecture first rose. When the wind direction changed to northwester, figures rose in Tokyo and Mayabashi City as well. On that day, it also rained in wide areas in Kanto, settling radioactive substances in the atmosphere onto the ground. According to Professor Yamazawa, this rainwater flowed into the river, ending up in water purification facilities at different locations. When raining, roughly put, radioactive substances settle onto the ground 100 times more efficient, thereby promoting the contamination in areas that are having precipitation. Ministry of Health is now advising that water works take measures against the increase in radioactivity caused by the rain. Matsuda Shinden Water Purification Plant is taking measures already. As soon as it starts raining, operators in the monitoring room at the plant remotely shuts down the intake wear at the upstream of Kinugawa River. They also use grains of activated charcoal to absorb radioactive substances in the water. Kashiwai Water Plant in Hanamigawa, Chiba is currently considering the sus suspension of water intake from the source on rainy days. At the plant in Kawamata Town in Fukushima Prefecture, sedimentation basins are covered with sheets to prevent rainwater from flowing in. This official of Kawamata Town says that we are taking every measure possible to prevent contamination and we monitor the quality of water. Professor Yamasawa says if the current situation persists, we may have a similar weather pattern. But the level of contamination and dose will so low in areas far from the source of the leak that you need not worry too much. The Japanese research team says the seabed rose by as much as five meters near the epicenter of the earthquake on March 11th. 
The earthquake hit, uh, the, hit Japan on the 11th of March, and this footage was taken by a Coast Guard ship off Fukushima. The hypocentral region is highlighted in pink. It stretched over 450 kilometers north to south. 200 kilometers off of Miyagi at a seafloor, 5,800 meters deep, there was a water pressure gauge placed, and that was recovered after the quake. A researchers group led by Associate Professor Rota Hino of Tohoku University analyzed data from this gauge. And they found that immediately after the quake, the sea floor had risen by about five meters. Given that the hypocentral region extended uh, over a wide area, over 450 kilometers north-south, it uh, shows that there was a massive change in the seafloor topography, which caused a large tsunami, and that the tsunami actually rose in height as it approached the shore and the water became shallower. Um, in the uh, Meiji Sanriku tsunami, uh, it is believed that the seafloor only moved by about two meters. This time, the uh, movement is more than double that, so it corroborates um, our theory that it was really an unprecedented large earthquake. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it will review all the data on radiation detected at the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. This comes after it confirmed that errors had been made in calculating the data. Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency has ordered the company to investigate the reason for the failure and to take preventive steps. Water contaminated by high-level radioactive substances has been found inside turbine buildings at the number one through number four reactors. TEPCO believes contaminated water leaked from the nuclear reactor. It's been analyzing the water and releasing the data on a daily basis. The company says it has found errors in the program it's using to analyze the radioactive substances and their levels. Experts pointed out that radiation levels found in leaked water inside the plant are too high. TEPCO and Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency say previously released data may have shown the level of tellurium-129 and molybdenum-99 higher than they actually are. But they say the level of iodine-131, which could pose a threat to humans and the environment, remain unchanged. This error in the radiation analysis undermines the credibility of TEPCO's assessment, which is very unfortunate. TEPCO should clearly explain which radioactive material data from previous assessments was incorrect and quickly redo their analysis. The agency says the data is crucial in attempting to identify the source of radioactive leaks and their impact on the environment. TEPCO will review all data taken from samples of seawater and soil. Now B from a village in Fukushima Prefecture that had tested positive for excessive radioactive cesium has been cleared of contamination in a t second test. Japan's health ministry has said on Thursday the beef contained 510 becquerels of cesium per kilogram, surpassing the safe limit of 500. The ministry says Friday's new round of testing did not detect any trace of cesium in meat from the same cattle. The initial finding was unexpected as the radioactive substances had not turned up in any other cattle from the prefecture. The health ministry says it will check to see if there were any flaws in the initial test carried out by a state-contracted lab.